And can I add to that, though, because that's a really important point. I tell my couples all the time, and I tell my husband too, non-sexual touch consistently is so important because that's what verges and merges you more together. Did you push record? Thanks so much for tuning into our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Hey, Silka. Hi, Paige. Well, today we're back talking relationships and from a different perspective because we've done a lot uh, about what men want. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we, we care about our men here. And in turn, we've gotten lots of comments from women. Well, what about what we want? <laughs> yeah. But, well, okay, what do we want? Uh, you know, and, and, and you came across this article that was really uh, poignant, and you know, to this point is that with especially at this time in our lives when so many marriages are breaking up you know after 20 30 years of marriage what's happening and how can we prevent that what do women want so this article was written by a man who was married for 16 years and lost the love of his life because he didn't listen and he didn't get the messages and he wrote this fantastic article that gave 20 points on he wish he would have known this um, sooner. And my guess is he probably was hearing it sooner, but wasn't ready to take it in and take the steps. But it's a great article. And the first thing that I want to say is imagine if in your relationship or in your marriage, if you put your significant other first consistently, because so many times we get comfortable and the person starts to drop on the list, drop on the list, drop on the list. It happens. So for both sides. Yes, on yeah. both sides. But right and now, yeah, we're talking about what women want now. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about what we want now. Right. So there's 20 points he has, and we won't go over all the points at all today, but Silka's going to link to it, so you'll have it. But I pulled out just a few that I hear over and over and over again in, um, in the work that I do, and, you know, what I bring up in my own marriage as well, and Silka and I talk about this. So... The first one is, you know, it's not your it's not your job to change or fix her. It's your job to be present and change with her. That's a real quick one. Um, second one is fill her soul every day, cherish her. Now, this is something that the men that I work with consistently go, what, what does that mean? And when their significant others ask them, honey, what, what do you think cherish, is, cherish means? I hear all kinds of examples. Um, it's really hard for a man's brain to wrap around what cherish means. They want to go to some kind of service or, well, I've done this for her and understandably so where they're coming from. So imagine if you have a seed and you're going to plant it for this plant or this, this flower. I like to say flower that comes out. So if you just take the seed and you throw it in the soil, do you think it's going to grow? No, you have to water it, you have to give it sunlight, you have to fertilize it, you have to check on it every single day to make sure that that flower kind of blooms. It's the same thing with cherishing. And I say to my men all the time, imagine inside of your hands is your significant other's heart. Like if you take your significant other's heart out of her body and you're holding it, are you going to go like this? Are you going to throw it down? Are you going to put it to the side to where it doesn't beat? I don't think so. So imagine cherishing means, oh my gosh, I have her heart. And a heart means many, many things. Does that make sense, Silka? Yes and no. I have to be very honest with you. I think I think more like a man. I'm like, I, 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 I have trouble with cherishing. <laughs> but here's why you have trouble with cherishing. Many people have trouble, which moves on to his other point, and what's a point that I talk about consistently that I'm going to expand about on. And it's about never blame your wife if you get frustrated or angry at her. It is only because it is triggering something inside of you. They are your emotions and your responsibility. So here's where my stuff comes in with this. Time and time again, people are not connected to their emotional state and they don't know what they're feeling. So they go to a place of anger. And you and I have already done a show or, or, it, ha or it, it hasn't posted yet on anger. So I'll save that for that piece. But it's really important, especially since we're talking about what women want, for men to go, what is your emotional state? In a relationship, the emotional foundation is one of the most critical, important aspects. For instance, you know, men get close with sex. Women get close with, with that emotional gentleness, that 
that type of a connection. So if men want to consistently, of course, have sex in, in their relationship, it's really important. If a woman's not getting her emotional needs met, she's not being seen, she's not being heard, she's not being cherished, she's, a man is not understanding what she's trying to say from an emotional aspect because a man doesn't know what he's feeling or how to get connected with his emotional aspect, sex is going to become robotic. It's going to be something that the woman is not going to want anymore. So when you said earlier, Silka, that, Paige, I'm having a tough time myself because I act like a man, would you say, Silka, because I know you really well, that you're in tune with your emotions? Are you asking me that? Yeah, I'm asking you. Are you in tune with your own emotions? Probably not. And that's a big component. And it's more so for men than it is for women. So, you know, what he had said is, you know, if something's triggering you, stop. What is it about what she's saying to you that's triggering you? Why is it triggering you? Because we're always mirrors to each other. So does a woman have to work on her emotional foundation? Absolutely, because each person is responsible for themselves and what they own in a relationship. But with men, this is a really hard concept because they weren't taught this. Men still aren't being taught this, how to get connection, how to get connected to their heart. Brain logic and heart connection go together, but they're too much up here. And women need you to come from here because that's how we feel cherished. That's how we get connected. So we just thought we'd talk about just three of the points today um, of what a man wrote, because we thought that would be easier for possibly men to hear this more in a different slant, coming from a man who lost the love of his life. Well, and we want uh, other women to tune in and, you know, leave your comments. You know, what is it that you want? What do you wish men, you know, would understand? And to the last point, I totally have to agree with you, is, is uh, there becomes a, a, a built up of resentment if mm-hmm. sex is only, that's the only time you're, you're touched. When you know that, oh, he's touching my arm or he's holding my hand or he's rubbing yeah. my, you know, it's because that he wants sex. It's not mm-hmm. because he's just being warm and affectionate. Yes. And can I add to that, though, because that's a really important point. I tell my couples all the time and I tell my husband, too, non-sexual touch consistently is so important because that's what verges and merges you more together because it's more intimate. It's loving. It's cherishing. It's not somebody always wanting something from you. Um, It's just being with that person. And I think one of the main points that we also want to get across in, in, in this show today is, you know, obviously linked to the article, read that, but mm-hmm. is that element of surprise that men voice when the woman all of a sudden leaves, especially, you know, in the yeah. these cases of great divorce after 25, 35 years, like, I had no idea. Really? You had no idea. And that, I think that's the point that this man, in, in, the author of this article made, and, and that is key that happened in my life it happened in my friend's life who are part of the show is all of a sudden the guy's like what what happened what did i do what can i do to fix it well it's, it's too late yeah and you know what women we will hang in there and hang in there if we start to see that you're you know making some shifts making some changes but when a woman makes up her mind and she's done she's done because she's already been waiting and and putting time into it and putting time into it. And I hear this from men all the time. When did this happen? Where was I? And that's the question. Were you present? Did you see her? See her? Did you hear her? And I hear men say a lot of times, well, she's so strong. You know, she handles everything. She can take care of everything. I thought that I could just go and do my business and things will be okay. I'm going back to that seed. You can't just throw a seed into soil and think that it's going to grow and it's not going to need um, care and nurturing. Big, big point. No, I, I agree. And, you know, there we have a, we have a, a, you know, a big male audience on, on this mm-hmm. program. If some of this resonates with you, really do take this in. Read that article, you know, do, do some more research on what is it that a, that a woman wants, you know, if you care to save your marriage or relationship if you feel like that's on the rocks. Paige, we're coming to the end of our segment. Is there anything else you want to add? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Couple things. Um, I showed this article to my husband and he printed it out and we've been talking about it and working through it because there were points in here that for whatever reason, he heard it more. Mm. So print it out, have a conversation, bring it to your significant other. Hey, is this what you feel? Are there any points in there? Talk about it. And last but not least, 
if you think relationships and marriages have this fairy tale ending and it's all wonderful, it's not. Relationships are work. So it's a matter of if you're going to put a lot of work into it consistently, you won't have these spikes of what the hell happened? What's going on? If you don't put anything into it and you just throw the seed in the soil and one day you have to do all this work and it's too late, think about that. Or if you're starting and go, wait a minute, let's do work consistently. So just food for thought. No, great food for thought. Paige, we'll see you next time on our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you have a topic that you would like to see us cover, please visit our website, secondact.tv. On our homepage, we have a suggestion box in the upper right-hand corner. Just drop us a line. Let us know what's on your mind. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time. Bye-bye.